Well, we've talked about the Tory Lanes and Megan shooting uh, over the past year and a half or so. And I remember I- I'm on camera maybe about a year and a half saying that based on what I know about this case and based on people that I've talked to that are connected to it, Tory Lanes is going to prison. Right. I said this. And everyone on the internet said, I don't know what I'm talking about. And everyone's saying that Tory's going to go free and Megan's lying and Megan shot herself and a bunch of other bullshit. But that trial happened and it worked out exactly the way I predicted. Yeah, a lot of folks always say uh, things about you that's not true. <laughs> you know, they, they say a lot of shit. So if they start paying attention a little more, then they'll be right some damn time, you know what I'm saying? But everybody want to ride their horse, you know? Everybody want to fake like they're your friends, so they don't tell you the opposite shit that then your, your real friend might tell you, you get what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying, somebody you don't even know at all will say, look, you look like a damn fool with that on, and, you know, your other niggas be like, oh, nigga, you fresh as hell. Because some of this shit I see niggas in, they be like a damn fool, and I'm like, who the fuck didn't tell them that they look like a damn fool? This shit on. Yeah. It's just crazy. And Tory Lane, I was, uh, I was like, damn, they gave him life. Did they give him life? Well, no, he hasn't been sentenced yet. Oh. Uh, he, the sentencing is going to be up to about twenty three years. Damn. As well as as well as deportation, because remember he's a Canadian yeah, citizen. Yeah, from yeah. Right. Damn. Right. Uh, and you know he went and got, uh, you know the old death row lawyer, David Kenner, to try to, you know, appeal the decision and do a, a retrial. Um, he also got uh, Jose Baez as part of his legal team. He's the one that got Casey Anthony off for killing her two-year-old daughter, oh, yeah. allegedly. Uh, you know, motherfucking, that second lawyer, Jose Baez, charges 200000 a month, non-refundable as a retainer. Oh, hell no. 200000 a month. He, he was Harvey Weinstein's lawyer. And right, he, he right, racked right. Up, he racked up a million-dollar bill just with Harvey Weinstein's lap, <laughs> who, who, who then lost his case later right, on. Right, right. But, but, but what I'm saying is, is that, you know, I mean, listen, he could try whatever he wants to try, it as he should. He's got some money. He's, going, he's fighting for his life at this point. But the realest shit that anyone's ever told me when it comes to this whole Tory Lanez case was when I interviewed Tony Yayo from G-Unit. He said flat out, he said, look, where I come from, right? He's from Southside, Queens, Queen, right? Yeah, he said, right. He said, where I come from, if you shoot somebody and they live and they take the stand and said that this person shot me, you're going to prison. Yeah, you gone. There's no way around yeah, it. Yeah, you gone. He said, nobody, nobody he's ever met has, has gone to court when the victim was going to take the stand against him. You plead out. Where I'm from, if somebody say you shot them, usually found guilty. So like where we from, like where I'm from, like I would have copped out. Cause somebody saying that I shot them and they willing to take the stand. Right. I'm just like, yo, I'm not gonna take it to trial cause I'm gonna do more time. I'm wasting the state money. So me, I'm gonna cop out. No, you plead yeah, out. He when right. the victim says he shot me yeah. and they point the finger right there in that courtroom yeah, in front of the jury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he right. He told me, yeah, yeah, he right like a motherfucker, so. By her being able to go there and her slash best friend, the girl, that know that's a witness too, even though she don't took money and did all kinds of shit. But um, that shit was crazy. Tori Lane went through that. I, 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 he was fucking both of them. They say so. You no, know, yeah. <laughs> maybe they got that kind of pussy. They got some killer pussy. You know, they can go to jail. Fuss up about this motherfucker. I don't know. I that shit was crazy. I just couldn't shoot myself. Shoot Megan in her foot. Cause I fuck with Megan. You know, I kind of took up for her. Uh, shit, I think on your uh, thing when, when Tori we talked that shit, uh, shot her in the foot and whatever he did to her. I took up for her because when I met her, she didn't. You know, she was happy as hell to see me, you know what I'm saying? And say hey, and we, you know, took pictures and all that old shit, but I never put the pictures up, I don't think. And um, she was just cool, and I, I said something about him, and he ended up uh, coming and rapping like a motherfucker on this shit. I'm like, damn. Yeah, I just think um, Tory Lane and Meg, that shit went too far. Uh, 
I guess everybody going too far with what they doing these days. You know what I'm saying? They going too far with drugs. They going too far with their feelings. It's just a lot of shit going on. I guess the internet did that to people. Well, yeah, and I've talked about this before. I think that the one thing, if you take one thing out of this equation, everything would have been perfectly fine, and that is a pistol. Yeah, the gun, yeah. You take, <laughs> yeah. and listen, Tory, Tory has a history of, of fucking around with guns. I don't know if it's that little man disease because right. he's five foot two <laughs> and he feels like he need to act tough. <laughs> but I remember he, I remember this rapper named Dax, uh, you know, I'd interviewed at one point that they got into it and he said that Tory pulled out a gun on him over just like some internet shit talking. There was this other dude from Love and Hip Hop that, that he allegedly threatened, you know what I'm saying, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you know that little, scene, that little person shit. Uh, I was met yeah. this little, little female before and um, I used to have to argue with this little bitch all the time because she felt like cause she was small. Or, you know what I'm saying? Look, short motherfuckers. A nigga used to be trying to get over on her or some shit. So I just had to leave her ass alone because I'm like, look, man, I'm not going to argue with you because of your size every fucking time. I'm saying something. You know what I'm saying? You think a nigga trying to bully you when, no, that ain't the case at all. It's like, bitch, listen, pay attention. Well, yeah, I mean, in general, I mean, especially if you're Tory Lanez, you could hire security to carry a pistol. Right, you. right. There's no reason. There's no reason why Tory fucking Lanes, who is a you know accomplished singer, right, rapper, rapper whatever you want to call it, needs to be needs to have a pistol. Because think about it. Take the gun out of this altercation, right? Okay, you fucking both of them. They get into an argument. They they fist fight. They pull hair. Whatever. You get in the middle of it. You take the pistol out the equation. And no one would have even heard about it. Yeah. It would have been it. Yeah. Maybe a few scratches, some bruises, you know, covered up with some makeup. Life goes on. Nothing would have happened. No one gets arrested. No one goes to prison. No one goes to trial. No one's losing millions of dollars. Uh, you know, no one's got permanent damage in their feet and nerve damage right, and, and, right, and right. all the fuck shit. You take that gun out. And everything, everything would have been, yeah. No one been. would have even known nothing. It would have just been a regular couple something argument that no one would have ever heard about. But you bring a pistol in the situation and, and you now crucial. escalate it to a point where you can't take it back. Yeah, it's crucial. It's crucial then. Uh, that's why his ass locked up. He, Like you said, the little bit of ass syndrome and um, just couldn't take it. You know, he just couldn't take it. I don't understand right now at all. I've been trying to figure this shit out. And I don't understand why everything is going so far to the left. You know what I'm saying? People is not sitting back and thinking or talking shit out. Uh, and yeah, I think the internet have a little something to do with that. But um, people, they know right from wrong. I heard, heard somebody say, when you grow up to uh, enough where you know right from wrong, then you should be treated certain kind of ways when you do shit because you knew right from wrong. You knew not to do this shit. He knew not yeah. to put no fucking gun out on no girls. And if you putting a gun out on girls, nigga, you got to be the sucker. You got to give a fuck what scenario. It could have been a play robbery. You know, the bitch could have said, hey, she like to do uh, what they call that shit uh, when you uh, role playing. And I, I had a whole say she like to act like a, she come home and a motherfucker in a break in the house and, you know, rape her and all this shit. I'm like, shit, bitch, I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> if you can get somebody else to do that shit, bitch. I'm not going to be faking it. We'll do what we got to do and get the hell on down. But, you know, a lot of these motherfuckers are just so crazy right now. If I think I think we do a great job for a lot of people. I'm going to tell you, and I can say thank you a hundred times because um, I wasn't the artist that put a lot of music out because I was with Paul and I was lawyer. But uh, after I started doing this shit with you, 
Man, these folks, I can't go no goddamn well. Glad TV, I saw you at Glad. I saw you. They be on my ass, dog. So, you know, I can say to you, appreciate that because, you know, that um this really does a lot. And the people love this. They they say, man, I just got to watch you at Glad, man. You funny as a motherfucker. I say, yeah, but I'm just going to tell you the truth. But, yeah, this this some good shit for people. 